Have you ever been in a situation where you've had to stop what you're doing because it all felt so familiar? And I'm not talking about that time when your mum rolls out that embarrassing story of that thing you did in the paddling pool as a toddler for the hundredth time. No, I'm actually talking about that uncanny certainty you feel, that you've been in that exact spot, talking to that exact person, saying those exact words that you've already said before. It might even feel like you know just what's about to happen next, but you can't quite grasp hold of the thought. You probably know it as deja vu. In science, it's known as paramnesia, and it's defined as any subjectively inappropriate impression of familiarity of a present experience with an undefined past. Now, the term déjà vu was originally coined by the French psychic researcher Emile Boirac in his book, The Future of Psychic Sciences. Before then, the feeling had been described with some brilliant phrases like phantasms of memory or sensations of reminiscence. And it was actually being described in texts as far back as the ancient Greeks, Aristotle, and Pythagoras both wrote about it, and Plato thought it happened because humans are born with an innate all knowledge. Everything that can ever be known and will ever be known already pre-exists in your brain. Time is illusion, merely the unfolding process of remembering everything. So has science come up with anything better in the intervening two and a half thousand odd years? Kind of. You see, Deja vu is pretty hard to study. Although 60% of people have experienced it at some point or another, it's difficult to observe naturally under lab conditions since people only tend to really have one episode every six months or so. However, some epilepsy sufferers experience deja vu as one of their warning signs that a seizure is coming on. And this has led to a theory that deja vu is a dysfunctional electrical discharge in the brain. Now, as distressing as that sounds, it's a similar electrical discharge which causes the common hypnagogic jerk, that sensation of falling that happens just before you drift off to sleep. But what's causing that familiarity? Well, if you electrically stimulate the parts of your brain that function as your memory hub, the perirhinal and entorhinal cortices, that can induce deja vu and nostalgic reminiscences. So deja vu could literally be an illusion. We're just thinking we've seen or done something before. Now, Dr. Alan S. Brown of Columbia University found that there are some conditions that do seem to increase a person's chance of experiencing deja vu, including being stressed, tired or drunk. Weirdly, he also notices that three quarters of deja vu experiences are triggered when we are inside. Colorado State University's Anne Cleary did a study on deja vu inside a building. Using a piece of virtual reality software, a bit like The Sims, she showed people a bunch of computer-generated rooms and spaces, including some that looked like a room the participants had just seen before, but with subtle differences like changed wallpaper patterns. And these tweaked rooms brought about a strong deja vu type sensation. She also wrote that it's not just the familiarity of deja vu that's interesting, but the experience of novelty or newness that we get with it at the same time. Oh, and that familiar feeling you experience might not actually be deja vu. It may be more accurately described as deja rev, already dreamt. And as well as feeling like you've seen it before, you can also have déjà entendu, already heard, or déjà goût, already tasted. Before I go, I want to tell you about four pensioners in the UK. Déjà vu typically passes in around 30 seconds, but these pensioners suffer from chronic déjà vu, where the sensation just won't leave them. Some of them didn't even go to the doctor for a long time to report it because they felt they'd already been and it hadn't helped. If you're worried that you may be reliving the same moments again and again, just do what Bill Murray did in Groundhog Day. Learn to ice sculpt and try to woo Andy McDowell. It's one of those superhero skills I've always wished I'd had. Well, I guess alongside x-ray vision, flying. Of course. Telepathy, the ability to read minds and communicate wordlessly through the power of thought. But is it really possible? Hell yes, please.